Hold on, Tough first. Horrible crimes committed by musicians by Tuff. Okay, let's see what Tuff's talking about. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Title. Today we're going to be talking about musicians who committed horrible crimes. There is in fact no Danny DeVito in the back. I know we always skip the tough intro. Oh, he got he got the the case impact by absorption ad. technology. These cases are test dropped 150. One fact chat. I did a case of I ad when I was first starting off on TikTok. You never paid me. Oh. I'm just, just, just saying. Just saying. All right, let's see what the video is on. Thanks for sponsoring this. Oh, there's an echo. Let me see. Oh, shit. Is it dead? <laughs> Maybe. Shot impact now, absorption echo? technology. These cases are test dropped 156 <laughs> times to ensure they can handle everything life has to offer. The clear case offers a sleek look for your devices with its clear back and slim form factor providing you with a low profile. Unlike other cheaper TPU cases, case device. Oh yeah, there's an echo. Yo, this is a fucking there's an echo on a video only. No, it is. Why the fuck is there a dollar under your chair? Don't get me wrong. Oh. There's a video echoing. Give me here. Mm. Chat, because the only way for them to hear them is for it to output through the monitor. Because I think because it's outputting through the monitor. Was it echoing when we did the try not to laugh? Oh, I hope not. They would have said something, though. Yeah, they would have said something. Yeah, it would have been spammed like shit. Yeah. No, 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 yes, no, no. Why did you start to play? No, no, no. It's the video. It's not you. Not because it, it, it could be me because I'm, I'm outputting it through the monitor. So if it outputs through the monitor, then uh, the mic might be picking up the stuff from the monitor. See, look at you. Hold on. Look at, you, look, at you, look at you. 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 Look at you getting ready to get banned for no reason. Look at you re getting ready to get banned for no reason. Let's get up. Okay. Uh, we've been echoing since trying not to laugh. Cause, okay, so... Um, what part are try not to laugh though? I don't know. Let me see. I feel like it would have been spammed if it yeah. was bad. Then we might have to put the mic away from the um from the joint because that's what audio is coming out. Let me like pull it over here. Yeah. Chat, give me one moment so we can go ahead and start. Chat, I know, I know, I know, I'm muted. Hold on, let me see. I'm trying to see if I can change the mic setting because what's happening is because the audio is playing out for everybody, for all of us, so all of us can hear it, it's, um, it might be echoing for some of y'all. Why is it not echoing during Try Not To Laugh? Yeah. They said some of them are saying it was, some of them are saying that it's not, so I'm trying to figure out what it was. Uh, 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 um, I'm muted. Yeah, I know, I know you can hear me. It definitely was. Okay. I'm trying to see what I could... What I could do. Hold on. Let me try to change the mic settings real quick. Can I ask you to get to this? Gaten. Gaten. I was supposed to say Gaten. <laughs> yeah. Gaten. He keeps asking. Get banned. How did? Why he? Uh, he got banned for something. Thank he you. Did. Ryan got it for me. What? It's hot pink too. The iPad. Mhm. Mm he said my iPad looks fire. That's cap. I bought that. See. I just started playing Persona Five Royale and it's da da like da 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 da. Uh, I'm trying to see if I if I up noise suppression. Uh, maybe that will work, but I don't know 100 percent if it will or not. Thank you. I know the iPad is huge. I'm a true iPad kid at heart. That's why I needed it. This. <laughs> okay, let me see, chat. Chat, I'm about to go add noise suppression, and then let me know. Okay. Ryan's very rich. I am not rich at all. All right, chat. I know I should probably sound a little quieter right now. Well, how does it? How does the audio sound right now? Just let me know right now. Mute the audio from the video so it just comes out through the computer. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. Cause if I mute the audio, then like I'm still going. You know what I'm saying? I'm still going to hear it. They're saying it's good. You sound the same. Well, I didn't play the video yet, so. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna be talking about musicians who committed horrible crimes. There is in fact no Danny DeVito in the back. Echo? Not forever. Just for this video and maybe the next one. But yeah, we got a Christmas tree. Woo! Festive. Also, the my album is good, but then some are saying it's worse. Y'all tell me two different things. This is pull this shit up. Video still echo. Echo doesn't matter. <laughs> we might just have to rock out. We might just have to rock. If, as long as the echo isn't like unlistenable, because we gotta go we gotta go get the reactions through or we're not gonna be able to get all the reactions through. Yeah. Let me see. Do you hear an echo? 
well, it's coming out through the monitor, so y'all might be hearing something different than than I'm hearing right now. There's no echo. Ear candy comes out it's, next it's still, month. Still feel we're getting like closer. Echo? We're getting closer. Finally, gonna give you guys a package. You guys don't have to listen to Cherry Soda on repeat anymore. <laughs> but yeah, like I've said before, there will be an ear candy album movie here on this channel. It will premiere live, and the album cover is officially released. Kind of a little echo. It's echo, but it's pretty light. It doesn't matter. It's an echo, but I can tolerate it. It's a, okay, slight, it's a echo. slight echo. So we're, we're just gonna have to. We're just gonna have to. There's no echo chat needs to We're just going to rock out. There is a uh, echo. I apologize. We do got to rock out with the reactions, though. So, and I need everybody to hear the joint. So we're going to go ahead and do those. All right. Somebody said this shit in my house funny. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. what? All right. Let's just, walk, let's, just, let's just walk the video. You know what I'm saying? Unless it's like super, super like horrible, then, I mean, we should be good. It's more like yeah, they're almost they're the echo's not bad. All right. Sid Vicious. John Simon Ritchie, better known by his stage name Sid Vicious, was an English musician, best known as the basis for punk rock band Sex Pistols. Despite dying in 1979 at age 21, he remains an icon to some of the punk subculture. To say John had a troubled childhood would be an understatement. He was raised by a single mother who sold marijuana to get by. She later Damn. remarried and John now had a stepdad, but sadly, that man passed away six months later due to kidney failure. By the time John was 15, his mother's life was consumed by a heroin and opiate addiction, causing him to feel lonelier than ever. While attending Kingsway College of Further Education, which was a school for students with difficulties, John admitted to a counselor that he had thoughts of and that he would torture and kill cats in his free time. That same... In GTA. Mm. In GTA. Jeffrey Downey used to do that. year, Richie met fellow Kingsway student John Ladon, who introduced him to his friends John Gray and John Wardle. All four, who became known locally as the Four Johns, quit school and began squatting in various dismal locations. Three of the Four Johns would then take nicknames. Lydon gave Richie the nickname Sid Vicious after Richie was bitten by Lydon's hamster, Sid. Two years later in 1975, Glenn Matlock and Paul Cook joined the band now rebranded to Sex Pistols. Though Richie still wasn't a part of the band, it wasn't until 1976 that tension started rising between member Matlock and their manager Malcolm McLaren, which led to Matlock being kicked from their band for, quote, liking the Beatles. The work environment was pretty I'm not gonna lie, all these niggas look crazy, bro. Yeah, like, they do. I'm not trying to disrespect nobody because I don't know their story or whatever, nigga, but all these niggas look crazy. I'm not gonna hold you. Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even gonna hold you. Toxic, with Matlock revealing that their manager purposely made them pick fights with each other because he thought generating chaos between the band was a creative mechanism. And he his manager's a fucking dumbass yeah. nigga. He basically <laughs> he just thrives off violence. Bro said basically, yeah, y'all just y'all just beef with each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, or he just like stirred up fucking false beef. Pick fights with each other because he thought generating chaos between the band was a creative mechanism. Anyway, this is when John Ritchie, aka Sid Vicious, would finally join Sex Pistols and become their new bassist. Just a year later, on October 11th, 1978. Eight. Sid and his then girlfriend, Nancy Spungen, hosted a party in their hotel room, during which Vicious took approximately 30 2 and tablets, and while many people came and went, he was comatose for the rest of the night. At about 11 a.m. the next morning, hotel staff found Spungen dead on the bathroom floor, Damn. with a knife wound in her abdomen. Vicious was found wandering the hallway. Yo, he first claimed to have killed her, then said he remembered see, nothing. Bro, Two people who had been at the party stated like, that- I can't say it. I'm gonna get you banned. <laughs> what the fuck? What? Hey guys, right. welcome back Oops. to another Oops. video. Oops. Today we're gonna pick from their band for quote liking the Beatles. Because later on October 11th, night Vicious would finally join house. Sex Pistols and become their new bassist. Just a year later, on October 11th, 1978. Sid and his then girlfriend, Nancy Spungen, hosted a party in their hotel room, during which Vicious took approximately 30 2 and tablets, and while many people came and went, he was comatose for the rest of the night. At about 11 a.m. the next morning, hotel staff found Spungen dead on the bathroom floor, with a knife wound in her abdomen. Vicious was found wandering the hallway. He first claimed to have killed her, then said he remembered nothing. Two people who had been at the party stated that Nancy was alive at 5 a.m. The murder weapon was identified as a Jaguar K-11 hunting knife, which Nancy had purchased for Sid a few days earlier. Vicious was arrested and charged with second degree murder. He told police that he and Nancy had argued that night, but gave conflicting versions of what happened next, saying, I stabbed her, but I never meant to kill her. Then saying, He just snitched on himself for no reason. <sighs> That's like me saying I gave you an F, but I didn't know you were gonna fail. Yeah. Like, come <laughs> on, Artists nigga. and self-snitching will never come, not be come like, on, bro. hand yeah. in hand. Saying that he didn't remember anything. Then after that, saying that Spongen had fallen onto the knife. 
Later, the arresting officer was quoted as having said, after an investigation, Vicious admitted killing Miss Spongeon during a dispute. Though the situation was a bit hard to get out of because Richie admitted to stabbing her, his manager, his mother, and his label were able to get a top-tier lawyer which arranged for Richie to be released on a $50,000 bail, with conditions that he wouldn't leave New York and that he'd sign in daily at the 3rd Homicide Unit offices. All legal costs were covered by Virgin Records. Just two months later, Richie found himself in another case when he was flirting with Todd Smith's girl. First of all, I don't know how this nigga got out in the fucking first place, bro. Yeah. But like, well, I know how. Well, through, through bail and fucking... Yeah, he's <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But like, nigga, I don't know how this nigga caught a body and, and just got out like that on bail, but... Virgin Records. Just two months later, Richie found himself in another case when he was flirting with Todd Smith's girlfriend. No, not that Todd Smith, but he was flirting with a man's girlfriend, and when Smith told him to back off, well, Richie broke a beer bottle and jammed it into his face, leading to Smith getting five stitches and Richie being arrested and charged with assault. In January 1979, Richie would be released on a $10,000 bail. In the morning- I'm trying not to pause too much, but this nigga only has bad flicks. Like, there's- I haven't yeah. seen a good flick yet. What is he eating? A glut? I think he's a glut. Yeah, February 1st, 1979, after completing his detoxification program, Richie was released from Rikers Island Jail. When he arrived he in Manhattan, Rikers he met his friend Island? Peter Gravel. Vicious asked Gravel to find him some heroin, and Gravel brought $200 worth of the drug to the apartment. Gravel said that they sat around doing drugs and he left at 3 a.m. when the hard drug use began. He noted that Vicious was already nodding off, but he also said that Robinson, which was another friend of theirs, gave Vicious four quaaludes to help him sleep. Vicious died that night of a drug overdose. Deborah Spungen, who was Nancy's mother claimed that Vicious wrote a letter to her when he was hospitalized saying, we always knew that we would go to the same place when we died. We so much wanted to die together in each other's arms. I cry every time I think about that. I promised my baby I would kill myself if anything ever happened to her and she promised me the same. This is my final commitment to my love. No one's ever going to know if Richie actually overdosed on purpose to meet Nancy again or if he genuinely accidentally overdosed. Mm. Damn. Chuck Berry. Charles Edward Anderson Berry was an American I'm singer, songwriter, and guitarist who pioneered rock and roll. Nicknamed the father of rock and roll, he refined and developed rhythm and blues into major elements that made rock and roll distinctive with songs such as Maybelline, Roll Over Beethoven, Rock and Roll Music, and Johnny B. Good, which was featured on the classic Back to the Future. Writing lyrics that focused on teen life and consumerism, and developing a music style that included guitar solos and showmanship, Berry was a major influence on rock music. Though he's seen as a legend by many, the fact that he's a predator and full-on creep seems to be forgotten. Well after his peak fame, when Charles was 61 in 1987, he was charged with assaulting a woman at New York's Gramercy Park Hotel. He was accused of causing lacerations to the mouth requiring five stitches, two loose teeth, and constusions of the face. He pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of harassment and paid a $250 fine. Three years later, in 1990, he was sued by several women who claimed that he had installed a video camera in the bathroom of his restaurant. Barry claimed that he had the camera installed to catch a worker who was suspected of stealing from the restaurant. Although his guilt was never proven in court, Barry opted for a class action settlement. One of his biographers, Bruce Pegg, estimated that it cost Barry over $1.2 million plus legal fees. His lawyers claimed that he had been a victim of conspiracy to profit from his wealth. Reportedly, a police raid on his house found intimate videotapes of women, one of whom was apparently a minor. Also found in the raid were 62 grams of marijuana, felony drug and abuse charges were filed and the abuse charges were eventually dropped and Barry agreed to plead guilty to misdemeanor possession of marijuana. He was given a six-month suspended jail sentence placed on two years unsupervised probation and was ordered to donate $5,000 to a local hospital. Still don't know why the abuse charges were dropped, even though there was apparently a video. Money, Later videos Barry recorded of himself urinating oh. on a woman and another of her defecating on him would surface. Whoa, whoa, and one whoa, of those whoa, videos whoa, 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 on a woman and another of her defecating on him would surface yeah that means that means he's she he likes getting shot on oh that's disgusting and one of those videos is uh it's on reddit it doesn't show that much but you can hear a chuck berry fart and then ask did i fart in your face not gonna play the audio but it's pretty odd and wild stuff nonetheless the dude was a fucking creep and he died on my birthday march 18th 2017. He died due to a cardiac arrest. It's so annoying that his music is built in all Teslas on their little Christmas mode. Hey Damn. Elon, this dude was a full-on predator. That's crazy.
Bard Goldvik Ethan. Bard Goldvik Ethan, aka Fost, is a Norwegian drummer known primarily for his work with the black metal band Emperor. Oh, okay, thank you for too much. He was sentenced to 14 years in prison for, get this, murder. He's been out of prison since 2003, but according to. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? I, I, he definitely okay. doesn't look like he, that. He don't look like he don't look like that shit at all. That's crazy. Yeah, he would have thought. Looks, he looks chill. Would have thought, man. To Ethan, while walking home from a pub through the Olympic Park, a well-known gay cruising spot, a man named Andresen, drunkenly approached him and solicited him for sex. Ethan agreed to go with him to the nearby woods, and there he stabbed Andresen 37 times. Ethan claimed that he felt no remorse at the time. Ethan, his bandmate and emperor, said that Ethan, quote, had been very fascinated by serial killers for a long time, and I guess he wanted to know what it's like to kill a person. The media has linked the murder to black metal, and speculated that Ethan was motivated by Satanism, fascism, or homophobia. In a 1993 interview, he stated, I am not a Satanist, but I praise the evil. And in an interview... I'm not a Satanist, but I praise what? the evil. Yeah, those two... I'm not a Satanist. one sentence. But I praise the evil. <laughs> I, I'm literally lost for words. Okay. All right, bro. For the book Lords of Chaos, he explained that he had been interested in Satanism, but there are other things as well. Basically, I don't give a shit. In a 2008 interview, Ethan said, I was never a Satanist or a fascist in any way. In a 2012 interview, he said, I never had any racist or homophobic views. Gal, who was an openly gay member of the Norwegian black metal scene, said that Ethan was the first person to send him a message of support when he came out. Police initially had no suspects, and Ethan remained free for about a year. However, he told Oystein Euronymous Arseth, Varg Vikernes, and a few others what he had done. After Vikernes's Oystein murder in 1993, which we will talk about next, Next, Ethan was arrested and confessed to killing Andresen. In 1994, he was sentenced to 14 years imprisonment, but was released due to good behavior in 2003 after serving nine years. Are you bringing my door like that? Hold on, chat. Uh-oh. It's the ops. It's block. <laughs> Whenever anybody delivers anything to my house, I make sure I put the center on the porch. Don't ring the doorbell. Don't knock. They, they, they still do it. They still do it. And then my dog wakes everybody in the house up. <laughs> like, they don't know how that feels. No, one time I ordered food from um, Foster's. I got a turkey burger. Mm -hmm. Ordered a bunch of ingredients on I was so hungry. I could not wait for the turkey burger to get there. Guy dropped off my turkey burger. First of all, forgot my drink. Then second, I opened the container that's supposed to have my burger in it. And it was just a burger and a bottom bun. No condiments, no top bun. No, no. <laughs> it was the no bottom bun, bun is and fucking meat. crazy. That's it. No, no mayonnaise, no ketchup, no lettuce, nothing. Just a plain burger with a bottom bun. didn't even give you a burger. He gave you <laughs> what you gotta eat. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, Y'all got it. I was you. telling them about how you heard I ordered that, that story. Burger? I'm sure you heard that story. The she Foster's got a fucking girl. burger with. <laughs> Just a bottom bun. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've heard The dude the seemed so happy, fuck? too. He was, like, singing. He sounded like he was from Baltimore. He was singing, laughing, put my food that on the counter, and left. Bun. I think I think he did. <laughs> he definitely did. I'm convinced that he did. <laughs> he definitely did. Top bun. He definitely did. I ain't gonna lie. All right, let's continue. El Pizza. Wow. Yeah, El Papa Pizza. John's is better. Yeah, Papa John's. Hold Papa John's is Domino's and Papa John's. Papa John's is better. Okay, I ain't gonna lie. Piece right now. Yeah, you can. All right, let's continue. Four months. Varg V. Kernel. Right, show the pieces. It's just cheese. It's, it's, it's nothing. Nothing to this. Now, the Mayhem Band is a topic you guys have requested a lot, but I honestly don't think I'm going to make a dedicated video to them anytime soon. There are some great documentaries here on YouTube all about that. However, I will talk about Varg V. Kernes, the 1993 to 1994 bass player for the band. On June 6, 1992, the Fantov State Church, dating from the 12th century and considered architecturally significant, was burned to the ground by arson. The cover of Burzum's EP, Ashes, is a photo of the destroyed church. Church. By January 1993, arson attacks had occurred on at least seven other major stave churches, including one on Christmas Eve of 1992. Uh, Christmas Eve? What? I'm just saying, there's like, these are kind of crazy. Well, to be fair though, chat, rap artists have done like worse. Well, I'm not saying they have done worse because there's murder and sexual crime on here, but the rap artists have done that too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like... We we not Some gonna act like that's not a fact. I'm not gonna hold you. 
Uh. Two. Ashes is a photo of the destroyed church. By January 1993, arson attacks had occurred on at least seven other major state churches, including one on Christmas Eve of 1992. He was found guilty of several of these cases. At the time, media outlets reported that he was associated with some type of Satanism. In later interviews, Vicarnes, while not accepting responsibility for the arsons, said they weren't Satanic, but instead revenge for the Christian desecration of Viking graves and temples. <laughs> he did it? Yeah, he did it. Yeah, he did it. 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 He did it, he did it for sure. He did it for sure. Thousand percent. Thousand percent. According to him, the arsons were on the anniversary of the Lindis Farn Viking raid. He claimed that all the burnings except for one were done by one person. In early 1993, problems came between him and Euronymous, which was the band's lead guitarist, which ended up in Euronymous's murder. It's been speculated that the murder was a result of a power struggle, or a financial dispute, or maybe even an attempt at outdoing the stabbing by Faust. On the night of the murder, Vikernes and Blackthorn drove from Bergen to Euronymous's apartment at Toyangara and also, Blackthorn allegedly stood in the stairwell smoking while Vikernes went to Euronymous' apartment on the fourth floor. Vikernes said he met Euronymous at the door to hand him a signed contract, but when he stepped forward and confronted Euronymous, Euronymous panicked and kicked him in the chest. Vikernes claims Euronymous ran to the kitchen to fetch a knife. The two got into a struggle and Vikernes stabbed Euronymous to death. His body was found in the stairwell on the first floor with 23 stab wounds, two to the head, five to the neck, and 16 to the back. After the murder, Vic Bro, he was, no funny shit, he was done after the first mm -hmm. one, like one to, he said two to the head, I don't know. how many to the back? I don't know how you can hate anybody that much, bro. Like, bro. What? I'm gonna stab Euronymous to death. His body was found in the stairwell on the first floor with 23 stab wounds, two to the head, five to the neck, and 16 to the back. After the murder, Vikernes and Blackthorn drove back to Bergen. On the way, they stopped at a lake where Vikernes disposed of his blood-stained clothes. Vikernes was arrested on August 19, 1993 in Bergen. The police found 150 kilograms of explosives and 3,000 rounds. No way! They better have given bro the book. They, they, yeah. they had to have thrown a book at him, bro. Bro had explosives. Bro is a war criminal, criminal bro. Like, what the fuck? They had to throw the book at this Literally. nigga. Literally. If he gets any type of bond, bail, or is allowed to have parole, bro, then I don't know. Just we know why. Like, we know why. Bro. I'm we not know why. Oh, my God of ammunition in his home. On May 16th, 1994, Vikernes was sentenced to 21 years in prison. 21? 21, bro. No. Well, this that shit, that shit better been twenty one of life. Mm-hmm. How this nigga get twenty one years, bro? He needs that chair. How this nigga get twenty one years, bro? How you not get the guillotine? Mm-hmm. Twenty one to life. I'm ho I, I ain't here at twenty one to life. Uh -oh. Yeah, I didn't either. Nigga. Now I'm not I'm not even defending nobody or saying nothing about nothing. But we saw yesterday we saw that small tiny man get twenty four years. How bro get to, how bro get twenty four years for that and bro gets twenty one years for this? Heck. Like I'm just saying, like there's this. I'm just saying there's like bro did like at least ten times more yeah. than that that tiny man who everybody was talking about yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Bro just he stabbed somebody like in different areas at least like a thousand different times, bro, and then was caught with just has a what it said one hundred fifty kilograms of explosives. Whatever he said. Jesus Christ, bro. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Norway's maximum penalty. The murder of Euronymous, the arson of three churches, the attempted arson of a fourth church, and for the theft and storage of 150... Bro, is lighting churches on fire for uh -oh. fun? How is this nigga allowed to ever be out? How is he... It's cuffing season and all the girls be needing to get a big boy. I need a big boy. Give me a big boy. I just realized what was going on. I feel he's saying. For fun. For fun, yeah, he's he's a freak. I'm not gonna lie. He's he's freaked out. He's freaked out. Three churches, the attempted arson Norway's maximum penalty. The murder of Euronymous, the oh. arson It's Norway. That's why. Oh. It's uh -huh. Norway. Even Norway judicial system is fucking dog shit. Holy shit, bro. That is crazy.
arson of three churches, the attempted arson of a fourth church, and for the theft and storage of 150 kilograms of explosives. Though Vikernes only confessed to the theft and storage of the explosives, two churches were set on fire the day he was sentenced. Vikernes continued with his band Burzum, which included one other member, Samath, after his release. He released three further black metal albums, Bellis in 2010, Fallen in 2011, and Um Skip in 2012, and a compilation of re-recorded songs. In the years following his release from prison, Vikernes became an active video blogger on his YouTube channel, which was called Thulian Persp- He's out? <laughs> He's out? YouTube? Damn. Norway is just is just just, yeah, just different. BK, up. thank you for the uh the hundred bits both both ones. The boss man, thank you for the tier one sub. I think I don't know how many subs we going on, but we have at least gone up 150 subs mm -hmm. to the stream. I ain't gonna hold you. Y'all been y'all been showing mad love. Um, I don't know how this nigga's a YouTuber though, but okay. Perspective. But YouTube removed his channel right, from the right, platform in June 2019. Oh. But by that point, the channel had 250 thousand subscribers. So there's a chance if he redeemed the 100 thousand subscriber play button that YouTube gave a murderer a play button. I'm talking about a murderer that had already killed someone, not like a YouTuber that ended up killing someone. Like, they, they rewarded a murderer with a 100K play button. Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash was an American country like singer songwriter. Much yeah. of Cash's music contained themes of sorrow, moral tribulation. It's whose father? No, shut up. Don't listen to my Ash Cash. Ash, Ash Cash's father? Mm -hmm. Or his great or great grandfather, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there more pizza in there? There's two more. I should have ordered two pizzas. <laughs> I'm, lie, cause I'm definitely about to go order some more after the stream. Yeah. Really good. Uh Johnny Sin's dad. Okay. And redemption, especially in the later stages of his career. He was known for his deep, calming voice. Kind of like, uh, kind of like me. In Los Angeles in the summer of 1965, Johnny Cash was living in the wilderness of Southern California when he sparked a wildfire with his overheated truck. It blazed through more than 500 acres and threatened the lives of endangered condors. This took the lives of 49 condors and there were only 53 condors in that entire forest. Sad because in 1987, the California condor was officially declared extinct in the wild. And bro is in part due, like, he is a large reason why that race is extinct, bro. Mm-hmm. Bro. Are you gonna eat my pizza? Are you gonna eat my pizza? <laughs> Tried to eat my pizza, bro. <laughs> it's good, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Domino's, y'all did this. Y'all put y'all put your foot in this one. I ain't gonna lie. Um, bro literally started like, oh, they, they don't exist no more because of, bro. Johnny Cat is making birds go extinct. He caused an extinction. Do y'all know how crazy that is to cause an extinction of an entire species, bro? Yeah, that's insane. Oh, my God. And it's condors, and there were only 53 condors in that entire forest. Sad because in 1987, the California condor was officially declared extinct in the wild, and it's safe to assume Johnny Cash had a lot to do with it. When asked by a judge if he started the fire, he said, My truck did, and it's dead. So you can't question it. He ended up settling the case for $82,000, or about half a million in today's dollars. When held legally responsible by investigators, Cash made lovely statements such as, I don't care about your damn yellow buzzards. Yeah, he was definitely feeling pretty remorseful. If you guys did not care either. Mm -mm. That's tough. Looking for ways to support the channel, other than just watching the videos, which I promise you it's already enough. Thank you so much. He's talking, he talking about Patreon? Uh, he's talking about his merch. W Tough merch, you know what I'm saying? Definitely go fuck with Tough's merch, you know what I'm saying? Oh, but we Christmas keep it on. Is it Christmas but, merch? I think yeah, it's, it's in Christmas red. colors. It's solid. Hot chocolate. Solid. All right, let's keep going. Ozzy Osbourne. John Michael Ozzy Osbourne is an ink. Yeah, yeah he, did he, he, did he, did he did it. He did it. He did it. A thousand percent. He did it. He did it. I'm not going to hold you. A thousand. A thousand percent. A thousand percent he did it. A thousand percent he did it. I ain't going to lie to you.
English singer, songwriter, and television personality. He rose to prominence during the 1970s as the lead vocalist of the heavy metal band Black Sabbath. On February 19th, 1982, Osborne had a few too many drinks and ended up stumbling on the street in nothing but his girlfriend's dress. He was in a dress because she hid all his clothing in order so that he wouldn't go out anymore, but Ozzy being Ozzy, he just put on her dress and left. He ended up taking a leak and thought nothing of it, and it was later revealed that Ozzy P... He put on said, fuck it, I'm putting the dress on. I'm not gonna lie, I just haven't, I haven't seen a, just haven't seen a, a, a rapper on here yet. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, just, a young thug stepper. They need to put TK on here. I ain't gonna hold you, brother. Yeah. They, they, they need to put TK on here. Peed within the Alamo Plaza, not the Alamo itself, but still pretty disrespectful as it's quite literally nicknamed the Heart of Texas. It holds this status because it represents the Battle of Alamo, which was a pivotal event in the Texas Revolution following a 13-day battle where Mexican troops reclaimed the mission, killing most of the occupants inside. Police arrested Ozzy, who spent part of the afternoon in a local jail on charges of public intoxication. He was later freed that evening on a $40 bond and performed at the city's Hemisphere $40? Arena. $40? What the f <laughs> That's crazy. Chat, I heard in prison, like, if you have a bond set at a certain amount, be half that. So you only have to pay half what the bond is. So this nigga, got so this nigga paid $20, $20 nigga, to get out. Y'all might as well have kept, like, not arrested what the nigga. The yeah, just keep his ass on the street. <laughs> it's not half one-fourth. Oh, okay, one-fourth. So what's one-fourth of 40 That's fucking worse is $10. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. They wow. put this nigga in prison just to let him out for $10. <laughs> wow. This nigga paid $10 to get out. <laughs> nigga, I could have got the nigga out, bro. <laughs> like, what the I could have got the nigga out, bro. That's crazy. In a convention center. This also led to him being banned from playing in San Antonio, Texas for 10 years. Once yeah, those 10 years were up, a sober Ozzy came back and gave a proper apology. He was allowed back in in 1992 after an apology and a donation of DMX. On July 1st, oh, guys, they, got my, they got my dog DMX on here. Let's, let's talk about it. RP DMX, RP. 2004 at 8 p.m. DMX, whose real name was Earl Simmons, and his friend were at the JFK airport, specifically in the parking lot for terminals 1, 2, and 3. Allegedly in a hurry, DMX and his accomplice were becoming irritated with the speed of the car in front of them. So DMX turned on the siren lights of his Ford Expedition. Why he had siren lights? I don't know. <laughs> How do you get siren lights? Exactly. I don't know. His, his drone was That's custom made. Shit. Yeah, you cannot do that. His shit was custom made, like bro. I DMX, I think of that one video where he's like performing for half the whole fucking world. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yo, have y'all seen that clip? <laughs> have y'all seen that clip where DMX is performing for like 5 million people, bro? <laughs> I need to find that clip, bro. <laughs> that nigga was literally that performing. Was yeah, and performing in front of the whole entire fucking world. DMX performs. I thought you farted. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> No. Like, look, Jesus Christ. Like, where is bro where, at? Where, where's the video at? Right here. Oh! 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 oh. oh. Crazy fit, by the way. You can't even see the it's back like, of where everybody like that shit is endless. This at least has to be like fucking 100k people, bro. That is ridiculous. Yes. Why are they all white? I don't know, bro. But, bro. <laughs> they all white? Call Kids Mountains? I see a white. Oh, shit. That's an iconic clip right there. I ain't gonna hold you. But let, let, let's let uh, Tough Clip real quick. I don't even know. DMX pulled the random car over, and keep in mind, the dude was with his wife and his daughter. DMX told the guy that he and his friend were FBI agents and attempted to drag him out of his own car. After failing to do so, DMX returned to his vehicle and crashed through a gate, where he was then arrested by Port Authority police and found with multiple rocks of crack cocaine. DMX and his friend, yeah. whose name is Jackie Hudgens, were charged with cocaine possession, criminal impersonation, criminal possession of a weapon, criminal mischief, driving under the influence of drugs or alcohol also for claiming being a federal agent and attempting to car
carjacking vehicle. The victim was originally seeking compensation and did everything. I'm not yeah, he did. Good. They just had a long list. The amount of $4 million from DMX. DMX's attorney, Rich Cord, spoke on behalf of his client, explaining that the rapper felt he was justified in pulling the victim over and making a citizen's arrest. He went on to say, His vehicle looked like it was a police vehicle, and he believed the victim should have gotten out of the way. When the victim didn't get out of his way, he decided he should pull him over. He readily admits to making believe he was an FBI agent and telling the victim to get out of the car. He denied striking him or trying to pull him out of the car. DMX was given a conditional discharge on December. 8, 2004, but pleaded guilty on October 25th, 2005 to violating parole. Here's a clip of DMX talking about it on The Breakfast Club in 2012. I was rushing for a flight, mm -hmm. right? and this dude in the raggedy ass Honda, he driving wild slow. Right. Now usually if I'm in a rush, you know what I'm saying, and I'm in that truck, I hit the lights and, you know, throw the siren or whatever, and they get out the way. Right. But he was just totally disrespecting my authority. Not that I really had the authority. <laughs> I didn't really have the authority. But what, what if I really did have the authority? Right. So you what threw the light on. Yeah, I threw the light on. So I'm not gonna, that is a crazy thing. You can, you can tell, yo, you can tell DFX wasn't, wasn't all the way there with some of the shit that he was doing, nigga, because that is a crazy thing to do. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. Nigga just, just he, he's just him. I ain't gonna lie. You yeah. just have sirens in your car. Well, that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that one, yeah. <laughs> that made, that, I think that made you feel like you had more authority than you actually had. <laughs> Rick James. James Ambrose Johnson Jr. Lord. Chad, would y'all fuck with me if I got this hairstyle? Mm, no. That would be my friend if I had that hairstyle. No, I'd make fun of you. No, 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 yes, yes, no. No, no, <laughs> Zestia. I'd rather get the patch. Can you tell him what the patch, patch is? Stream. You can tell him what the patch is? Just search up the picture. <laughs> Show them the picture. <laughs> the patch. Oh! Haircut. I'm gonna just show he looks like a Jim Crow cartoon character. Yeah. No offense. You would, but. <laughs> oh my god. Chat, this is the patch. What Kanye had. This is the patch. If y'all, if y'all, if y'all. This, this is the patch right here, man. Where is patch, though? Like the Where's the, oh this guy. patch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's the haircut. Miles would rather me get this haircut that's your than fire. this right here. You know mm. what I'm saying? That's your fire. I'd much that. rather the. Say you know it's my hood, Rick right? James. <laughs> my nigga Rick James. Okay, let's see. Here was an American singer, songwriter, musician, and record producer. Born and raised in Buffalo, New York, James began his musical career in his teenage years. He was in plenty of bands before entering the U.S. Navy Reserve to avoid being drafted into the Army. In 1964, James deserted to Toronto, Canada, where he formed the rock band The Minor Birds, who eventually signed a recording deal with Motown Records in 1966. Johnson's career with the group halted after military authorities discovered his whereabouts and eventually convicted him of desertion-related charges. He served a few months in jail. After being released, Johnson moved Is that Steve? That, he, I can see where y'all getting Steve Lacey from too. He, he do kind of mm -hmm. look like, like Steve too. Rick James grew up where I live. Bro looked different at every pick. Bro, his, bro hair was Bro, hair was amazing. You know yeah, he had that blowout. That's tough. Bro was fucking transforming. Bro's hair looked better than a lot of women. I ain't gonna lie mm -hmm. to you. Steve Lacey died to California, where he started a variety of rock and funk groups in the late 1960s and early 1970s. In 1977, James finally found success as a recording artist after mm -hmm. Is this like... The bangs is Those crazy. No, I'm, talking, I'm not talking about the hair. Is this like a towel or is this like an outfit that he's wearing? That looks like an outfit. That's an outfit. That, that's, 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 that's bad. That's bad. Fits right there, but let me. We're gonna let Rick cook though. We're gonna write mm. Rick cook. Blue Riot was actually, it was actually for the time. That's actually what they were wearing, so you can't actually say that. So, my bad, my bad. After signing with Motown's Gordy Records, releasing the album Come Get It in 1978, which produced the hits You and I and Mary Jane. In 1981, James released. I'm not I gonna lie, he, the fucking boots. Oh his thighs, yo, his thighs is, yo, his thighs is kind of like, yo, I ain't gonna hold you. If you Rick, cut his, like, they definitely thought that, his, out the way, and then just show, yeah, like, like from the guitar, down? if you, that neck down, bro, I'm not gonna, yo, so he would've got some of your yeah. niggas, bro. <laughs> he definitely would've, bro, that's Yo, Brito, thank you for the nine months, nigga, I do not have some ass. 
Uh, bro, I know this would have been a holler. They turned yeah. around. Yo. Just ran off. A bunch of men were questioning their sexuality. That's tough. His most successful album, Street Songs, which included career defining hits such as Give It To Me Baby <laughs> and Super Freak. By the 1990s, the drug abuse was public knowledge. He was heavily addicted to cocaine and later admitted to spending $7,000 a week on cocaine for five years straight. On August 2nd, 1991, James and his girlfriend Tanya Hijazi were arrested on charges of holding 24 year old Frances Ali hostage for up to six days, tying her up, forcing her to perform sexual acts, and burning her legs and abdomen with the hot end of that's torture nigga so almost a week of that that's insane i'm not gonna lie that is actually crazy nigga yeah. i don't care how much hate you have in your heart or something like that's actually insane nigga i don't remember this i've never heard of that either I me neither this is my first time jesus christ this. Of a crack cocaine pipe. All of this during a week long cocaine binge. Ultimately, James untied the victim and she fled his house, eventually checking in to Cedar Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, where her injuries were brought to the attention of police and her story unfolded from there. Sadly, many of the allegations made by Ali were not upheld. Due to his strong legal defense team, James managed to avoid life imprisonment after being cleared of the torture charge. You see, this is only one of the many stories when it comes to Rick James being a horrible person. And it didn't seem like Rick James was apologetic, as when another one of his victims was recounting what she went through with him, he was seen audibly snoring in the courthouse. Other stories include minors, which I'd rather not talk about. This is another one of those things where people... This nigga has a list, like a list of crazy shit. See, yeah. I, ain't, I ain't know all that. I, I didn't all either. I ain't know yeah, all that. And the crazy, crazy thing is he said that he never got, like, imprisonment. Yeah, they say yeah. avoided he all of it. This lawyer was amazing, nigga. He got soul, yeah. nigga. God damn, nigga. Some of the worst human beings on earth got the best music, and it's wild. No, nigga, that's a nigga, fact. That nigga, it's been, yeah. I ain't gonna hold you. That's crazy. People just seem to not talk about. Frank Sinatra. There is a very famous picture of Francis Albert Sinatra a.k.a. Frank Sinatra. This image is the infamous mugshot photo, and who would have thought that one of the world's best-selling music artists arrest was, well, for a crime that doesn't even exist anymore. And what was that crime, you may ask? Seduction. This charge was usually- what? Huh? You can go to jail for seduction? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. So you get you would go to jail for red. what the fuck? You, if you raise anybody up or well, attempted yeah. to raise anybody up, you would go to jail. How do how do they start families? He said he was too sexy. <laughs> That's prime hating. <laughs> Legal. Yeah, no, that is That's really tough, like bro. they're hating hard. Like shit. It Unless it was exist. like seduction, like they're trying to put it to the point where like the girl wasn't feeling him or like he was trying to do something to her. That'll be sexual seduction. harassment. That'll be yeah, sexual harassment hard. though. But seduction like he's saying like... back then. So I don't know. Oh, he, yeah, he said that like law doesn't exist anymore. I mean, yeah. That, yeah, that shit don't exist no more. That may have been sexual harassment. Let's see what seduction, seduction is. is like, Oops. Seduction. It's not, it's not like you're influencing the person to do anything. You're just... The well, act I enough seducing back someone. Back then, maybe that Tempting like, seduction or attractive. was just a word for like sexual harassment or something. Oh, yeah. That, they could have Because like, it was it. like super old or whatever. So Damn. that might just be sexual he harassment. Just, he just built like that. What can I say? anymore and what was that crime you may ask what? seduction what? this charge was usually applied when a man convinced an unmarried woman of good repute to engage in an inappropriate encounter with him there was generally a promise of marriage that would never actually come true thereby ruining the woman's reputation it was basically when a man would lie to a woman damn yeah. that nigga duke dennis yo you know duke was there yeah, back duke then duke, yo, been nigga. duke was there nigga duke was no, there he nigga. probably definitely was duke was there like that nigga Duke Dennis was struggling so back. I ain't gonna catch to Go back and get the evidence and get Duke put in. Yeah, I'm dead. Ooh. In GTA. Women of high standards in order to fuck her, usually promising marriage. In other words, the official crime for all the 1930s busters with Riz. <laughs> Oh my fucking god. Riz Academy. In 1938, a 23 year old Sinatra yeah, found himself in that. 30s busters with Riz. <laughs> oh, go back. Oh, fucking god. Riz. W pick. W pick. Where's Duke at, though? Hold on, my bad. Jump scare, yeah. chat. Jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, jump scare. Damn. <laughs> Damn. They got annoying TV. Why is it on TV even there, bro? Like, TMI is. 
Oh you should definitely be the other my one. god. Why did he put annoying TV right there, bro? TOS? 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 <laughs> Jesus Christ. With Riz. <laughs> Y'all gotta stop. Y'all gotta stop. Uh, y'all gotta chill out on annoying, bro. Like he, he's, he's a oh, like, person. Fucking god, Riz Academy. In 1938, a 23 year old Sinatra found himself in that situation, and he was officially arrested and booked for seduction. The charge was eventually dropped, and it was later discovered that the supposedly single woman was in fact married. Later that year, the original charge was revised slightly, and Sinatra was again arrested. This time for adultery. Adultery is legal punishment for cheating on your spouse whom you're married to. It's a really outdated law, which some states are actively trying to get rid of. These states include Alabama, Arizona, Florida, Georgia, Idaho, Illinois, Kansas, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Mississippi, New York, North Dakota, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Utah, Virginia, and Wisconsin. I mean, this is a pretty lighthearted one on the list. I know the woman- exist in Florida. Florida has Florida, bigger yeah. fucking problems. Yeah, Florida, that is the least- I ain't never heard nobody getting locked up in Florida for yeah, adultery, nigga, no. ever in my life. I'm not gonna lie to you, Villains running around there. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's um, Death Osiris, thank you for the two months, man. And uh, he's thank you for the 100 bits. Utah, Virginia, and Wisconsin. I mean, this is a pretty lighthearted one on the list. I know the woman still cheated, and I feel bad for whoever her husband was, but imagine if this mugshot was for something way more heinous. Imagine it was like Frank Sinatra mugshot for robbing blind old lady, then pushing her in front of a semi truck. <laughs> it, just, it just wouldn't feel right. Elvis Presley. Elvis Damn. Aaron Presley was an American singer and actor, dubbed the king of rock and roll. He's regarded as one of the most significant cultural figures of the 20th century. His energized interpretations of songs and- I'm always hearing shit about Elvis though. It was also, it was like, I always hear like bad things about the nigga. Like he, I heard that the nigga got packed up on the toilet, that he stole a lot of shit from black people, which is a fact, you know what I'm saying? I always be hearing shit about, about Elvis. But I heard his music is, is cool, you know what I'm saying? But- Didn't I say make a- Modernized movie of him not too long ago. Yeah, I didn't want to say I didn't see that shit. But and sexually provocative performance style led him to both great success and initial controversy. He became insanely famous with Heartbreak Hotel, which was his first number one hit being released in January 1956, and he quickly became a star. In Joel Williamson's book, Elvis Presley, A Southern Life, he writes about Elvis's life on the road, including his time spent with teenagers. Williamson wrote that Nigga, who? Time spent with who? Yeah, maybe P. Thomas. Yeah, that's crazy. LS four four five. Yep, go figures. What the fuck? I would never understand why once you reach a level of fame, you go like to the people you're not supposed just to be, be around. Stupid. Like, like I'm sure there's a lot of people that want to be around you. Like, why are you going to? Minors. Yeah. Niggas it's is weird. weird. Like, it does not make sense. <laughs> okay. And while on tour, Elvis preyed on a group of three 14-year-old girls who would pillow fight, tip... 14 is crazy. 14 is insane. Boy, nigga think he Thomas. trippy red, nigga. Like, what, what's going on, my nigga? 14 years old? Teenagers, nigga. Those are preteens, nigga. Literally, they're just hitting puberty. Why? Michael, wrestle, and kiss Elvis, who was 22 at the time. He also met his wife when he was 24. She was 14. Though they got married. Nigga, nigga. Now come to fuck one. <laughs> There's just no fucking way. Nigga, this yeah. isn't talked about enough. Why does nobody know about this, bro? Well, I'm gonna say nobody, but. Everybody, like, they push it to the side. Damn, this just goes to show you, nigga, with music, music just be more important than what niggas actually did, bro. Like, it, in society, because I ain't know the nigga did it. A lot of people didn't hey, know. you seen that uh, R. Kelly episode of the Boondocks, nigga? Damn. Oh, I, I want a cookie. That's tough married when she was 21, they claimed they never had sex. This has been questioned by many, many people, even to the point where a book has been written about it. Multiple books, actually. Now, Elvis was never charged with anything regarding these relationships, but he should have been. And I'm sure we can all agree on that. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you liked it, make sure to leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. Also, go follow me on Instagram. We're almost because the template is is old. So almost that hundred thousand. W video from Tub, man. Tub. W video from Tub, man. Um, I think I paused so much on that video. We don't have time for another video, but um, that was a W video chat. I'm not gonna lie.
I didn't know niggas was really getting down like that, man. It's crazy, bro. I know yeah, niggas was really getting down. It really is almost eight, 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 eight minutes left.